Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whenever you're watching. Welcome to Wednesday Wisdom, and uh, it's great to connect with you. Obviously, I've been out of the saddle, uh, haven't been sick for a little bit, but man, I'm back in the saddle and ready to go, and I really do hope things are good with you today. And uh, so we're going to spend just a few minutes, uh, you know, that's a loose interpretation, of course, uh, but no, seriously, we're going to spend just a few minutes continuing on what we began to unpack Sunday was a week ago I mentioned in service that we were going to be teaching a series on darkness and of course um, it may not sound very exciting or exhilarating or profound but the truth is that uh, we all go through dark places and so uh, I just want to spend a couple of minutes sharing some things with you uh, about what God's doing in your dark place. I really do hope that you're not dealing with darkness at this season in your journey, but the truth is, uh, if you've been connected in relationship with Jesus for any length of time, then you know what it's like to be in a dark place. Uh, and by the way, let me say this real quick. Um, believers aren't the only folk who go through dark seasons. The difference is that in our darkness, According to the Apostle Paul in Hebrews chapter 6, our faith is an anchor of the soul. Uh, and specifically, that faith is tied to hope. And so, as we talk about dark seasons and dark places, that's what I want to really, really uh, be, be focusing on is the, the anchor. See, hope is the anchor of the soul. And you've got hope. Uh, let me put it this way. There's hope in your hell hole and so you may be going through hell but i declare today it's going to be well with you uh in spite of the hell hole that you're in so uh for those of you that are into confession you know what do you like to declare self declaration confession what is the confession of your mouth uh you know in spite of the hell it shall be well uh, and so that's not just a, a mantra or a cliche. That is an expression of hope, of faith. In spite of the hellhole, it's going to be well with your soul. So and just talking about that and unpacking it a little bit. And so moving forward with that, uh, I want to share with you just a little bit more about Joseph and pull out some, some things that are very important. Uh, when, when Joseph in Genesis 37 has the dreams, the two dreams, uh, you know, the book said that his brothers hated him already, uh, but when he begins to dream, he is hated even more. And everything, everything about the journey Jacob then begins to experience and go through, uh, being sold out, being put into Egypt, being uh, the, the season in, in Potiphar's house, the season in prison, uh, and by the way, your uh, dark place is just a season. It's not a sentence. And uh, so, so hope, having that hope, see, hope that's tied to truth, hope that's tied to purpose, hope that is anchored in God's reality, in God's truth, that is where our soul is anchored. And so when you think about an anchor, uh, it's important to recognize the purpose of what an anchor does. An anchor keeps a ship from drifting out to sea uh, you know so when you're anchored you're secure but you're still being shaken so the anchor doesn't keep you from being shaken in the dark season what it does is it keeps you from drifting into outer darkness <laughs> that you can't come back from so hope that's tied to truth hope that's tied to purpose hope that's tied to the possibilities that still reside in your dark place. The promises of God over your life uh, are anchored, and your soul is anchored to that hope. And, and so in Joseph's case, when he gets in prison, you know, he can't, it, there, there are glimpses of hope, but, you know, there's a time when that door looks like it has shut forever on him when uh, the chief cupbearer, forgets him you know we talked about that two weeks ago so you find that in Genesis chapter 40 when he's serving them and uh, Joseph has 
uh, the gift of dream interpretation. So there's a whole lot of things going on, and I don't want to try to unpack all of that in this in this session. I just want to uh, bring you a, a refresher and, and talk to you about hope that is anchored in purpose, hope that is anchored in possibility. So just a couple of things to encourage you today. Um, so again, your confession needs to be, in spite of the hell, it shall be well. And I say that to you uh, to release hope in you. In spite of your hell, it shall be well. Now, you may not see it. In dark places, we don't see clearly. Uh, so just because you don't see clearly does not mean uh, that you've lost something. I think that's really important to remember. Um, in fact, I'm going to drop this on you. It's a very, very powerful truth, uh, and, it, and it makes, it, it, I think it'll resonate with you. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about vision, and um, being in a dark season when you can't see clearly, you have hope and faith, uh, but you can't see clearly. Joseph can't see clearly. He said for two full years, there's no communication from the cup bearer, uh, the butler, uh, the what he thought he saw as a door in one season, now that door is closed. And, and, you know, and the tougher thing is, is that God doesn't seem to be talking to him. And so, man, when you're in that place, when it doesn't feel like God's talking to you, then what do you do? When you can't see clearly, but you've had a lifeline of communication where the Spirit of God is communing with your spirit, and you got a flow of... Uh, of insight, the word speaking to you, worship is ministering to you. Maybe your situation is not changing, but uh, you can sense that God's with you. That's that's one that's one level. But when you're in a dark season, and you're in the let me qualify a term: the presence less place. God's present with you, but you can't feel, you can't sense God's presence through His. Uh, you, you can't sense him um, experientially, either externally in the atmosphere. Let me put it this way. You go to church, and everybody else is worshiping, and they got their praise on, and uh, people are being ministered to, and you feel nothing. Those seasons happen. When you go to prayer, and it doesn't seem to be working, and you can't seem to find a groove, find a flow, uh, it's going to stress you out a little bit. When you don't seem to be able to make any progress in your journey uh, when you're investing and sowing seed and just man making moves and it just seems like on every handle hand you're blocked and God won't talk to you about it what do you do with that well that means you're in a dark season and again it's a season not a sentence but you can't see clearly and so uh, you're gonna struggle in that place with a lack of vision so I'm gonna say something interesting uh, recently, I read something that was very profound from a high-level leader who deals with uh, and works with CEOs. Uh, I'm talking about people who are major movers and shakers, and really, this ties to Joseph. It ties to even David in the Scripture. It ties to Joshua because um, the most powerful thing that influences people to follow leaders, according to a, a recent survey with high-level movers and shakers, is not vision. It's courage. Uh, there was a there was a survey done of high level executives and um, asking them what's the one trait you most admire in a leader. Uh, the answer wasn't vision; it was courage. Courage remains when vision's gone. So courage is faith in the absence of vision. Let me put it that way in kingdom terms. Courage is having faith in the absence of vision. This is what Joseph does in those two years in prison, and this is what, uh, what God requires of us when we are in those dark seasons when we can't see clearly. There are going to be times when you can't see clearly, but because you're not visionless doesn't mean you're not courageous. So somewhere in the darkness, and here's the great thing, your perseverance, which, by the way, in the kingdom, perseverance is power. So when you're persevering through a dark place, you're in a power position. You just you can't feel it, man. When 
when there's no evidence of God's presence, you're not experiencing Him like you want to. And however it is, you and He connect together. Um, however He ministers to your life. When you're in that place, when that's not flowing for you, uh, the, you know, the, the thing to realize is that God sees your courage when you're moving in a dark place without vision. Uh, when we started this teaching two weeks ago, I called it the visionless void. You're in a place where you can't see clearly. You've got hope that's anchored you, uh, but you're still being shaken. So going back to the anchor, you think about a ship in the ocean. Let's take a, a major, a massive cargo ship uh, that's transporting cargo from one continent or one port to another. And uh, they get out in the middle of the ocean and um, so that they don't drift, they drop anchor. Uh, the waves still rock the ship, but ultimately the ship is not moved off of its course. And it requires tremendous courage of every man and woman on that ship to remain anchored while they're being shaken. And that's the way it is when we are in very dark places. And uh, if you are a man or woman of God, worth your salt. If you've got real dreams, real purpose, real identity, real passions in you, real uh, pursuits in your life. For some of you, there are real anointings, real callings tied to ministry in, uh, in, the, in the kingdom space. But there are others, you've got anointings and callings that are tied to the marketplace. Your space is sacred, but it's in a secular space. And, uh, and you need to know that dark places are part of the journey. And so you may be rocked by the waves of the darkness, but you're still anchored. Hope is the anchor of the soul. And that anchor, that hope is tied to purpose. It's tied to what God is doing with your life. So when you're there in that type of a scenario, you can't see clearly because all of the things God uses, the methods that God uses to communicate to us that feed our faith because faith is seeing. And, you know, seeing is not believing. Believing is seeing. Faith is seeing. But, but what about uh, when you don't see clearly? Again, it comes back to courage. So somewhere in the darkness, your perseverance in the darkness means your courage is on display. Your perseverance in your darkness means you're operating in courageousness. Joseph is courageous in prison because he doesn't quit. He can't see, and the book said that for two full years there's no communication. There's a strong indication there that God uh, isn't clearly communicating with Joseph. So the principle number one that I want to say to you is this today. When you can't see but you're persevering anyhow. You're demonstrating the most powerful and most attractive characteristic. And that is courage. You see, because when you're in a dark place, the enemy uh, won't allow you if he's hitting you or if just if you're just in a dark place yourself. What you won't be able to see is the courage you're, li you're walking in, the courage you're demonstrating. Uh, listen, I think sometimes, just as personal uh, insight, I think sometimes God allows us to go through dark seasons so He can strip us of the need to feel uh, like God's kingdom is full of spiritual superheroes. People who have all the answers, people who um, have it all together. We don't. Nobody does. Everyone has got issues. Everyone... Um, has weak spots. We have blind spots. We have vulnerabilities and faith and power in God. Uh, they don't remove those elements. As long as we're on this planet, as, well, as long as we are God's people on a people planet, we are going to have vulnerabilities and blind spots. And our blind spots and vulnerabilities set us up to really struggle mightily when we are in a, um, a dark place. So, <clears throat> Joseph can't see, 
And again, the indication is God is not talking to him. Have you ever been in that season where it's like, God, I just would feel better. Okay, so if you're not going to work this out right now, God, at least just talk to me. At least just visit me. At least just give me a word. Uh, let me feel your touch. Let me experience you. And heaven is silent, and it seems like God doesn't respond. So what do you do with that? I'll tell you what you do. When you continue to walk by faith in that visionless void, you're demonstrating the most powerful, most attractive element of leadership. And that is courage. David faces Goliath with courage. Joseph faces prison with courage. Joshua faces his assignment with courage. Courage. It's strength of heart. And you may feel very weak today. You may feel, um, I don't know what you're feeling, but if you're in a dark place, you're going to feel a lot of negative emotions. And so faith is not an antidote for that because faith doesn't remove the human element of our journey. It doesn't remove emotion, thoughts, and feelings. So let me just step back and ask you this. Um, when you're in a dark place and you can't see clearly, are you paying attention to the effect that that's having not on your faith, but on your feelings, on your thinking, on your thoughts. What's going on with you? How much does it affect your thoughts and feelings? And to what extent do those thoughts and feelings, and even if they're negative emotions and moods that set in on you, because moods are long-term. You know, emotions are in the now. They're what you're feeling right now based on whatever it is you're processing right now. But moods are longer term. You know, moods are where you are for a few weeks or months or sometimes even years. You know, so and, 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 and being in a sightless place when you can't see clearly because of the darkness that you're processing, it's going to take a toll on your mood. So how are all of those things affecting you? How are they influencing your thinking? Here's the good news. Because the dark place is a season and not a sentence, God sees and counts your courage in the dark place as seed. And your courage is attractive to God and to those who are following your lead, to those somebody you're influencing. We're all leadership. We're all influencers. It's just, you know, we don't all share and occupy the same space. We're not all called to the same thing, but we're all called to influence. And somewhere in your dark place, your courage is influential and somebody's taking notice of it even if it's only God you know he sees you and you need to know that and so courage is powerful because it's tied to purpose so a couple things I want to just share with you as I get ready to wrap this up to encourage you that's the teaching part now here comes here comes the encouragement so God grows things in dark places I don't have time, and I'm not going to try to unpack that today, but you need to know that. God grows things. Grace, here's a cool thing. Grace grows in dark places. Grace multiplies in darkness. That sounds kind of crazy, kind of out there. Well, Paul, Paul spoke to that when he said, where sin abounds, grace super abounds. So where there's darkness, there's great, grace is greater. Um, sin is a type of moral darkness. Where there's sin and wickedness, there's darkness. But God, the, uh, Paul said that where sin is present, where darkness, here's the greater principle, where darkness is present. Can you imagine the emotional darkness, the mental darkness, the spiritual? Can you just imagine the sense of hopelessness that permeated that prison that Joseph had to wrestle with? How dark was it at that season in his life? Grace was greater in the darkness than the darkness was. So, so darkness doesn't drive grace away. Darkness, watch this, darkness is a spirit magnet. You need to know that. Darkness is a spirit magnet. It's a magnet of the Holy Spirit. The darkness you're in is, is attracting the grace of God. And your courage is not going unnoticed in that dark place you're in. And so 
God grows things. Grace multiplies. Grace grows in darkness. And because grace grows in darkness, grace grows things in the darkness. We'll be talking about that as we move forward in this series. Um, so a couple of practical things that I want to give you. Two practical things um, to focus on. When you're in a dark place, when you're in a dark place, be intentional about finding the purpose of the dark place. What's my purpose here? My purpose in the dark place may not be um, may not be where I want to be long term. They may not look like the fulfillment of my dreams and passions and purposes and plans. Find a purpose in the darkness. It may seem small. It may seem insignificant. But just find a purpose and serve it. Purpose is powerful because it, 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 it brings hope in the room. Purpose is powerful because it brings hope in the room, and hope is the oxygen of the soul. And when you focus on serving that purpose, it helps reinforce your courage and gives you a little space. So, find a purpose in the darkness. Now, if you're in a really dark season and you're asking God, show me what you're doing here, the pro probability is very strong. God's not going to talk to you about that. So, don't let that become an excuse to not look for a purpose and serve it. And then watch this. Build everything in that season around that purpose you discover. Look for a purpose. I promise you if you'll ask the right questions and look for the right opportunity, shift your focus off the darkness and being consumed by it to finding the purpose in the darkness. If it's one purpose. Joseph has one assignment. You know, he's, he's, he's revolutionizing the prison, but ultimately God really has connected him there uh, to connect with the butler, the cupbearer. So he's really doing a big thing, God is, doing a big thing in a small place. And, and when you can find that purpose and serve it, you discover that that one small purpose may be the key that opens a really big door. Find a purpose and serve it. That's the first one. The second one is, when you can't see clearly, trust the gift of God that's in you. You've heard me talk over the last year about trusting the grace of God. Well, um, grace is one thing, gifts are another. God's got gifts that he's given you that the darkness can't steal from you. The darkness does not take your gift. It does not negate it. It does not invalidate it. It does not cancel it. So find a purpose and serve it and trust the gift that's in you. In the presence of the dark place you're in, trust the gift that's in you and just work the gift. You can't see clearly, work the gift. If you'll trust the gift, you'll work the gift and you'll discover the gift working for you. You see, when you trust the gift and work the gift of God that's in you, even in the dark place you're in, that's the ultimate sign of courage. That's the ultimate act of courage. Courage says, I can't see clearly, but I'm going to trust the gift that God's given me, and I'm going to work the gift, and the gift is going to work. When you work the gift in darkness, you're operating in courageousness. So, find a purpose and serve it. Trust the gift and work it. Find the purpose and serve it. Trust your gifts God gave them to you to produce for you, and your gifts will produce in darkness even if they don't seem to be opening the doors you're ultimately believing for. Seasons change. Dark gives way to light. Night gives way to day. Weeping endures in the night, but joy comes in the morning. Your season is subject to change. So, I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will provoke and reinforce the courage in those today who feel really discouraged, who feel frustrated, who maybe feel hopeless and suffocated in the darkness. I pray, God, that you will cause hope to anchor their soul anew today in the truth they're believing you for and ultimately in who you are. Somebody today, God, has been in a very dry season, and I just ask you, Lord, that you will visit them with peace and a renewing. Let a renewing of soul be their reward today.
God, I'm praying right now for people who've walked quite courageously in some very private, personal, dark places. And I know, God, that you're going to honor and reward them. And I just ask you, Holy Spirit, let the spirit of counsel uh, be activated in their hearts, in their spirits. Let them um, sense a renewal of hope, a recovery of strength in the area of courage. May they be encouraged today in the depth of their being. Let them recover courage and be strong in you and in the power of your might. God, I pray that you will move your people from dark to light and let the dawning of a new beginning and the overflow of the emergence of a brand new season be upon their life. And I thank you, Father, for their testimony in their hell hole. And I ask you, Lord God, to visit with renewing grace and a refreshing rain in the lives of your people. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. Amen. Thanks again for connecting, being part of uh, what we're doing here, Wednesday Wisdom. Look forward to seeing everybody locally at uh, Metro Life Church Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, it's going to be good. Tell somebody about what God's doing here. Make sure to become a subscriber if you're not already and click the notification link. Uh, and uh, would love to hear from you, your comments at the bottom of the video. If what God's doing here is a blessing to you, make sure to share this with somebody. Uh, hope is making a very strong comeback in your life. You are anchored in the darkness, and God is nowhere near done with you. I love you. Have an amazing day.